She was only fifth after the first dive, but moved her way up into second, was second all the way along until it came to those final dives and Tonya Couch sitting alongside me. So don't worry, she's got this. <laughs> Mainly because her last dive was her most difficult, but also because you were completely confident that she would nail it. Absolutely. I know for well, going into that last dive, she felt comfortable because she knew she could do it. And I said to you, I said, don't worry, we've, she's got this, she's got this. And she did, and she just took over that Ukrainian diver. Well, let's talk about Sofia Liskin because she was the 2019 European champion and she moved herself into a very strong position with a second dive that had a very high difficulty rating, 3.3, actually more difficult than any of the dives that Andreas Spendalini Syriax had. I'm loving the panda. Oh, it's good. Yeah, not many girls do this dive because, you know, back three and a half is really, really difficult, but she punches out at the entry and she gets her arms back and she's able to do a really, really good dive at the end there. And it's a brave dive to do as a woman. Why is it so difficult? Well, you take off, you've got to get a real high jump and then you've got to spin as fast as you can in a, such a tiny little tuck shape and know where you are in the air. It's, it's a tough, tough dive. That put her into the lead by a wide margin. And it, it really, I find it so interesting where they put their more difficult dives, who's comfortable doing them early, who wants to leave them till later, where you might slip in an easier one. I think it's best to always do your hard ones right in the middle because you can start off doing well. It gives you the confidence for the rest of the competition and you can finish off feeling comfortable. So it's nice to get it done in the, in the middle there and that's exactly what she did. Andrea put one of her more difficult dives in as her second dive, a forward three and a half somersaults in tuck. And how did you feel this went for her? Well, her first dive was a little bit shaky, so she went in here knowing that she could do really well here, and that's exactly what she did. And being outdoors, it was really hard to spot that entry, and she nailed it. Great takeoff, jumped as high as she could, and in that tiny little tuck shape, look how squeezed her knees are into her chest, and she punched out for the water. And with the inward dives, I'm always so worried about them hitting something on the platform. She's quite far away from the board there, so which, which is great to be safe. Um, I'd rather it be a little bit further away than close. Um, so she, she doesn't need to worry about her head hitting the board there. If we look at her arm stand, which was the third dive that she put in, you were slightly concerned on this, at how far away from the edge of the board her hands were. Yeah, I wouldn't like to put my hands any further because otherwise when she punches off at the end, at the beginning, sorry, she can be quite close to the board. So her hands, for me, I'd like them a little bit closer to the end. But we did see a little bit of a big push at the end and she, it's, it's nothing to worry about. She used her arms to take off and basically tucked her head in at the end and went a tiny little bit over. But the strength you need in that handstand is crazy. And are the wristbands there for protection or, yes. or yeah, rather than because there's an injury or a weakness? Protection. The amount of dives we do on 10 metre, you can get bad wrists and triceps and that's there to protect your wrists. Always difficult to go last because you kind of know it's all on you. You know what you need to do. And as she stepped up there for her final dive, again, a very difficult one, difficulty rating of, of 3.2. She knew if I, if I nail this, the gold medal is mine. There was just a tiny weeny opening from the Ukrainian diver from Lishkin because she'd put in an easier dive towards the end. That's it. I mean, going last for anyone is probably the worst place to be um, because you can see everyone else doing well in front of you. And today, there's a few divers that didn't do so well, so the pressure was off for her and the Ukrainian diver today. But, yeah, she knew she could put that one in and, and just take the Ukrainian. We'll have another look at it. Back two and a half somersaults, one and a half twists in pike. Called it as soon as she entered the water, said, that's it, that will be enough. You called it. And the rest <laughs> of us are all going, can we just wait for the score? And that's a nervy moment, but the judge is absolutely agreeing that, that she was the standout performer and she's the European champion. But what a way to do it. So tense. I know. Like, she saved it to the end. You know, she was, she was right up there. 
But if you know you're going to take the last dive and absolutely nail it, why not leave it to last? Make everyone scared, shaking their boots, and that's exactly what she did. What I also enjoy about watching her is that she looks to enjoy it so much. She's she you don't see tension. She gets on with it. She celebrates when there is a reason to celebrate, and a gold medal obviously is the ultimate reason to celebrate. But frankly, you know, w winning a medal against a very strong, particularly a strong Ukrainian opponent, the rest of the field might not be as strong as usual mm. because no Russians. Um, but that is a great, a great achievement. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. And like you said, she's so like calm, and I think she just takes it all in and enjoys it. And if you have fun in sport, you'll do well in it. Exactly right. Stay relaxed, enjoy the moment. Tonya, thank you so much. I thank know you'll you. be back tomorrow. Lots more diving to come. But for now, thank you. And it has been a busy day so far. If you're just joining us. I Oh, so good to watch that again. And watching with me yesterday was, of course, Tonya Couch. She's back again for today. And look, we can talk about Kyle and Lois all day. It was brilliant, a gold medal for them. And like we say, their confidence is going to go sky high because they're such a new partnership. That's it. What a great start. How awesome. And hopefully the rest of the team can go off that gold medal yeah. and feel pumped and ready for the rest of the competition. And let's talk about the rest of the competition today. The reason why you're here, three metre springboard mixed. This is going to be good because we're dealing with now with Grace and James. Now, for Grace, she normally, she dives with Tom. Yes. OK, and here she is now with James. And it's going to be a bit of a different energy and a different dynamic, isn't it? And how difficult will that be for someone like Grace to adjust to? Yeah, it will be difficult because, you know, James is very, very strong. This is his main board, three metre. But Grace is really strong too, so I think it does work really, really well. And they were both from Scotland. They're great friendship, like they've got a great friendship and it does make a huge difference. So they're gonna bounce off each other and they're able to communicate, which is the key thing here. They would have been bored with the confidence from the guys yesterday, but the Ukrainians, again, I'm sure they're gonna pose a strong threat maybe here, Tonya. Of Tonya. course, and the Germans and the Italians. <laughs> yeah, we've got a few, but, I think after last week with the Commonwealth Games, they're going to get some confidence from that. OK, well, fantastic stuff. Well, we can head out to Rome there, to the pool. Germany, the European champions indeed. A stunning silver, though, for Grace and James. Tonya, you were watching five dives in total. We're going to go through some of the dives in a moment, but for Grace and James, this has got to be a really positive step. You know, a partnership that's not necessarily solidified, but here they are at this level doing so well. That's it. I think they'll be really pleased with the silver. Personally, I think they were marked down a little bit on dive three and dive four. They should have had a bit higher scores, but that, you know, I might be biased. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I think they'll be really, really pleased with that. And they've got so much more to give. And it's so exciting how well they're going to be doing. Well, let's take a look at the fourth dive because, you know, the, one of the first things you did say, oh, I'm not sure about that score. So let's take a look and see and just talk us through this dive, Tonya. Yeah, so basically on this dive, I mean, look at the synchro. They twist the same time, their somersaults come out at the same time and the judges only gave it, I think it was like a seven, seven and a half, which personally I think they should have got in the eights. But look at that. And the fact that it's in slow motion and they are still in sync yeah. says it all. But the thing is, you, I remember you saying to me yesterday, in terms of the judges, they don't necessarily have the playback. They don't get to see it. It is down to the naked eye. And how much of that is frustrating for divers, especially if they know that they probably could have been marked a bit higher? I know. Sometimes they just look at the entry. Um, but, yeah, it's a good thing that they don't see it in slow motion <laughs> because we might be scoring threes later on down the line. So we don't need that. But, uh, yeah, no, it's crazy how fast they've got to be on it. And the fifth dive as well. It was a good dive, but not enough to be able to just snatch that gold medal. Yes, um, James's hurdle step was a little bit on the edge of the board, so he did come off too much on the side, and that did cost him the gold medal. But he normally does front four and a half somersaults, so the fact that he has to take a somersault away from this to match Grace is huge, and that means he's got to train pretty much double the amount of dives as everybody else. So he still nailed it, considering he had a bad takeoff. And it's interesting that you talk about the dive that he has to adjust. You know, in, in, in my simple mind, it actually makes it sound like it should be an easier thing to do. But for him, I guess the muscle memory, the training, mm. maybe brings on some challenges. Of course. You know, you practice your four and a half dive over and over and over again, different takeoff, different throw, and then have to bring it back. It's hard to control, and he controlled it 
on a bad hurdle, yeah. so that's amazing. I mean, Grace, she's super experienced at this level. She knows what to be able to do here. She normally, of course, dives with, with Tom Daly. What are the, the, the challenges for someone like Tom? You said he's, you know, he's taking some time out, he's sitting at home, he's watching that. <laughs> I'm sure cheering them on, but at the same time, you know, that's a partnership that I'm, I'm guessing he wants to protect, maybe. Yeah, of course, but for Tom, his specialty is the platform, so... I don't know what he's thinking, and it's not in the Olympics just yet, yeah. so I'm sure he'll be at home cheering these guys on. Oh, he's absolutely fine, then he's just chilling at home. <laughs> Tina Punzel, though, from Germany, she's one of the combination of that gold-winning pair, the medals. It says it all. She's won so many, she's so experienced, and we saw it with some of the dives here today. I think we can take a look at her fourth-round dive, and the German's so clean, so efficient, efficient with it. Yeah, I mean, she's so consistent, and I think that's exactly what you need as a diver. Um, and it's her single partner, completely the same, pulled back down the dive from doing a four and a half to a three and a half. And they were both a little bit over, but the whole way through this competition, they were so consistent and their synchro was fantastic. No, it is brilliant to watch and you could hear the crowd. They really enjoyed that as well. And someone like Atina Punzel here, she comes into this competition, like we say, with the experience. This isn't necessarily in the Olympics, but again, what is the benefit? Why come to this champs and, and do an event like this and not focus on an Olympic event, maybe? I think it's good fun. You know, it's nice to take a little bit of seriousness back and enjoy a competition mm -hmm. with one of your friends. And um, I've never actually done mixed synchro with these guys before, but I've heard from the others that they just love it. Yeah. And I think that's so nice to have. The fifth dive as well for the Germans. We sat here, we both kind of <laughs> was like, yeah, round of applause. Well done, guys. You just know straight away, as soon as they come up off the board, it was perfect. That's it. They saved their best dive to last, and it proves today that they deserve that goat medal. How challenging is that for you, though, Tonya, knowing that you're last up and there's a level of pressure? We saw it with Kyle yesterday, didn't we, Kyle Kothari? The, the, the slow motion we saw him <laughs> shaking. shaking a bit and it, there's a lot on the line like how is that for for the guys that come up on come up last it depends sometimes they don't look at where they are placed at the end so they probably not look at the scoreboard some people do some people don't so if they do and they know that they have to do a certain dive to win that's when it gets really really nerve-wracking and of course, for them, the Germans, it's now it's really good. We talk about this build up towards the Olympic Games, we talk about the confidence of teams. Great for the Germans, but again, another medal on the board for GB. And again, we speak, Tonya, about the fact that this is a team whereby, you said it yesterday, we don't often get to see diving as much as we have done over the last few weeks. They're going to love this moving forward. Absolutely. That's all that people are seeing right now on TV is diving, diving, diving. I remember back in the day that diving wasn't even shown. When I first started, I think I was going into my seniors probably at the age 16. Nobody even knew what diving was. <laughs> so like now it's so big and it's so beautiful to watch. So I'm so pleased it's on TV. And then we're getting to see personalities. We're getting to see some of the names as well, which is really cool as well because, you know, that you can see people are having fun. And how important is it for you, actually, that the that diving at this level is really shown to people and for young people who maybe want to get into it as well? Definitely, and especially for the young people. Yeah, I think everyone at home um, want to be basically what these guys are on TV. And it's anyone's game. These guys should come into their local sports place and try diving because not only is it amazing, it's great fun. You make the most amazing friends. You travel the world. Yeah, there's, it's just fantastic. Well, one person we did see during the the Commonwealth Games as part of the England diving team was Andrea Spendalini Syriax and she was absolutely amazing because she's only 17 yes. years old and she'll be up next um, in the in the diving pool on the platform we can take a look at her England's Andrea Spendalini Syriax 17 years old and a Commonwealth champion that's the result you get from working hard what a dive to finish on yeah that is definitely a silver medal dive. Wow, what a dive. And it's gold for Andrea and Noah without a doubt. Unbelievable. That is the dive of the competition. She leaves and breathes diving. I feel like the king. <laughs> Andrea Spendalini Syria. It's exhilarating, it's incredible, um, and it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, the absolute time of her life. I'm thinking that she's going to be expecting her A-level results pretty <laughs> soon. But what a summer for her, Tonya. And again, she'll go in the platform final in a moment. And for her, this is an, a great summer. We speak about development. How much will she take away from this summer and learn about herself? Oh, I mean, so much. And by the looks of it, 
She's having the time of her life. And she just needs to keep doing that. Don't let pressure get to her. Enjoy every moment because the older you get, the more pressure happens. It's it's crazy. So I just want her to stay in this bubble yeah. and keep doing what she's doing because she's doing fantastic. Oh, brilliant stuff. We're going to talk about her a bit more in a moment and her chances in really well in the relays so far. I'm delighted to say that joining me here in the studio is former European champion Tonya Couch to look ahead to the women's 10-metre platform final. And we have, Tonya, two British divers in this, Andrea spendalini Syriax, and your old partner, <laughs> um, Lois Tolson. How did they get on in qualifying? Yeah, they did really, really well, nice and steady. And that's what we're looking for. We don't want them to use their best dives straight away. So we've got a first from Andrea and fourth for Lois. Let's, we'll have a look at Andrea in action because she sort of sprung to the, the forefront, as it were, when she was very, very young. She was Young Sports Personality of the Year. She's had a terrific year so far and seems to be relishing the high-pressure big events. Yeah, I mean, she handles the pressure really well, actually. It's a great year for her. On a hard dive, she still comes out and nails it, and it's tough doing it in an outdoor diving pool. Yeah, it, conditions there look pretty good, thankfully, because whether yes. there is strong wind or rain, you'd be thinking, oh, this doesn't look much fun. Oh, that changes everything with the wind, especially in a handstand. Um, so it looks really good condition, thank goodness. She was more than nine marks ahead of all of the others in qualification, so we'll go in there as favoured, we'll dive last. She's used to that position now, and it's amazing how quickly she's learned, because she went to the Tokyo Olympics last year as the youngest member of the British team, and already you can see the experience of consecutive big events mm. makes her just that bit more confident. It does. I think the more competitions you do, the more experienced and feel better and more, like, chilled about yourself and it, and it does make a difference unfortunately for the people that are injured and they haven't had a big competition run through the year it does set them back a bit so keep doing the competitions and should get more experience that way the difference with this competition is we've got no russian divers because they're banned no mm -hmm. chinese divers obviously because they're not european um so she's going in there as the marked person if yeah. you like and that's very different she's so far been sort of the youngest one or the one that's not considered and has been able to spring surprises it, it, this is this is going to be an interesting one this afternoon. Yeah, I think she's probably not watching too much that goes on in the media because that's probably the best way to do it. I used to not focus what's going on behind me and just stay in your bubble. And I think that's exactly what she's going to do. And it's maybe it's it's helpful to her that her father, Fred Syriax, mm -hmm. is a very well-known personality, used to dealing with, you know, cameras snapping at him or headlines being made about him. He's the host and maitre d' of first dates, and people <laughs> have seen him on the TV. So she's had that, you know, she understands what what attention looks like. I think that's going to help her in her sport, 100%. You know, she's had pressure on her for a young age because of her father. So, yeah, maybe it's going to work well for her. So, thank goodness for that, really. Let's have a chat about Lois Tolson, and who, who was as young as Andrea is now, if not a little younger, when you were teaming up with her. And she's qualified here, is it fourth or yes, fifth? Yes, fourth. Fourth. What are you thinking about her chances of maybe getting a medal? I think it's a nice spot to be in because if she puts a great dive down, the pressure's on for the rest of them. Um, she came in young, just like Andrea. And obviously, when you get older, the pressure is harder. And I think maybe she's feeling that little bit of pressure now, especially when the youngster comes up and takes your place. Um, but she has so much talent, so much talent. Look how high and beautiful that dive is. She just needs to smash it on the day and then she'll be up, where, up there with the rest of the guys. It seems that the synchro events have really helped both of them. They've had good experiences in mixed synchro events at the Commonwealth Games, for example. And the more you dive in competition, with all of that training that you put in, because obviously you train for how many hours a day, roughly? Five. Five hours a day, every day of the week? Apart from Sunday. So six <laughs> days of the week, five yeah. hours a day. Training, training, training. That's a lot of impact on your body. Going into competitions, is that sometimes not easier, because obviously you're being judged, but is there less diving for you? Um, yes, there's probably less gym work. You know, there's a lot of gymnastics, trampoline and weights, but when you get to a competition, you, you back off on that a little bit, so there's less training. So, yeah, I suppose it would be easier in, in that way. Who should we see as, as the other major contenders in this final? Ukraine. 
The young girl looks pretty good, but as long as Lois and Andrea puts the dives in, they'll put the pressure on her. Sofia Liskin is her name. And the Ukrainians have a very strong diving team. I mean, it's a sport that they take very seriously. We saw a really emotional win in the pool yesterday for Romanchov in the, in the 1500 metres. He spoke afterwards.